Good day, my plant foldies. This is Richie at Grow Folds, and today we will be big box store plant shopping at the Lowe's in Allen, Texas, off of McDermott Road. As always, please make sure you guys are hitting the like button and also subscribing to my channel. I do daily one hour plant shopping videos, and um, I also can be reached out at um, Instagram at Growfold, so please follow me there as well. But as you can see, what a beautiful sunny day out in North Dallas, which is um, where I'm based at. And this is a particular Lowe's that I like to visit. You can see that their outdoor section is extremely packed with a bunch of plants. Um, it is day two for um, spring. And you can see right over here, gorgeous looking pink jasmine. Love me some jasmine flowers. I'm thinking about possibly getting me some um, Arabian jasmine. But this one right over here is for $29.98. This one takes full sun. It's growing up a trellis and it's starting to bloom. I do love some jasmine plants because they have such delicate looking white blooms. And you can see they've got lots and lots, I would say hundreds of different types of plants available for the outdoors. And in this episode today, I wanna actually venture into potentially taking plants that are really meant to be outdoors and potentially growing them indoors. So we're gonna take a look at that. But right now we are looking at a bunch of these petunias, hanging baskets, there's tons of petunias. And as we walk into the outdoor section, we can see that there are so many plants, hundreds of plants available at this Lowe's location. We've got some marigolds right over here. Not a bad price at all for some marigolds. Now with marigolds, um, uh, they're very easy to grow. They need full sun to really bloom. Actually, most flowering plants do need full sun or a lot of bright light just because it does take quite a bit of energy to produce blooms. And you can see right over here, they've got some more petunias and some more mandiv uh, mandevilla um, flowering plants. But you can see they've got landscape, tropical. So these are um, specifically tropical plants Plants that you can grow out in the landscape. Now, if you live in North Dallas, these will not survive um, if you plant them in the ground. Typically, for tropical plants, you have to put them in planters so you can potentially overwinter them and take them inside um, when it gets to be super cold or um, we get these freezes during the winter. And you can see right here, Acer palmatum, or um, Japanese maples is what they're, they're um, also known as. Love me some Japanese maples. So for those new to the channel or just getting to know me, I actually love Japanese maples. I have a Japanese maple collection in addition to all of the outdoor and indoor plants that I currently have. Now, Japanese maples, um, they are so elegant, but the thing about Japanese maples are you have to grow them in more shade versus like full sun most varieties i would say a lot of the varieties wouldn't be able to do it like you can see right here this one is a lace leaf maple this is a crimson queen um, japanese maple and i like the fact that lowe's and all the uh, you know other big box stores actually have japanese maples available in larger sizes typically for japanese maples they're more of like a specialty sales type tree now if you're looking for some really good japanese maples to buy online i would recommend mrmaple.com Bendicino.com. And if you're a local plant foldy, and if you're new to my channel, I call my viewers and subscribers plant foldies. You can go to Metro Maples, which is a Japanese maple or a maple nursery out in Fort Worth, Texas. I'm, I'm planning on actually visiting that. My friend Scott Hubble actually runs and owns that business. What a beautiful place to um, check out. You can also get some rare azaleas, but you can see at this Lowe's location, gorgeous looking Acer Palmatum or Japanese maples. So plant foldies, let me know if you grow Japanese maples, what you think about them. Um, I dream about going to Japan someday and being able to see all of the Japanese maples as well as like cherry blossoms, anything Japanese um, related, I really like. I like Japanese food, just the arts in general and even just the location. So that's some more content that I'm potentially gonna get onto the channel. But as you guys can see here, look at how the light hits these um, leaves, gorgeous looking Japanese maple. Now we're gonna walk over here and look at some hibiscus. So they've got different varieties of hibiscus colors. And you can see right over here, this is these um, Rio um, planters, I guess these tropical planters that they have. 
Um, we've got a bunch of other combination tropical plants. Like we've got a cordyline or tea plant with mandevilla flowers. I really like that a lot. And this particular um, cordyline plant um, looks to be a little bit more chocolate brown. Um, I did like seeing the ones from Home Depot from the, our previous um, premiere. So if you haven't caught that video, please check it out. Um, hashtag team replay it. And you can see here we've got some more mandevilla flowers. Um, I'm just going to um, pan on a lot of the outdoor um, flower, you know, plants right now. So um, I hope you guys stick around for the indoor plants. But for now, I'm going to be showing you guys some outdoor plants because I am in the hunt for a couple of plants that I might grow indoors eventually. Um, you know, somebody had told me that a lot of plants can actually be grown indoors. It just really depends on the lighting conditions and just the care. So we're going to see what that looks like. But you can see right here, we've got another combination tropical planter in alocasia plus um, mandevilla and then we've got even more hibiscus here um, my family's from the philippines and um, in the philippines they call hibiscus gomamela um, i've said this in previous videos but gomamela or hibiscus grows so well in tropical settings like the philippines um, i saw a bunch of cool variegated um, hibiscus on an Etsy shop called Green Escapes. So we're gonna see about po possibly purchasing from Green Green Escapes. I know I recently put in an order for some white fusion calatheas. Um, I've been growing calatheas in hydroponics and for those who don't know what hydroponics is, it's basically growing plants directly in water with no like soil substrate or anything. And it's really worked out well for me, especially for, for plants that are super thirsty and finicky like that, um, yes. Anyways, we're going to be looking at some knockout roses. Um, knockout roses are very easy to care for roses and they are profuse bloomers. Now with roses, I've had a rose garden before, a variegated rose garden. You really have to give them a lot of space. Do not um, top water them. So basically don't spray them with water. Their leaves don't like to get wet because if you get them wet, they're more susceptible to like um, fungus diseases, that yellow, um, disease where like the leaves turn yellow and black i forgot what it's called but that's really the demise of my um my rose garden and here we've got some croton petras for 1998 gotta love some crotons with crotons you want to grow those outdoors that is a plant that most people will try to grow indoors if you do grow a croton indoor they need a lot of light so bright indirect light or just full sun and here we've got some more knockout roses these are the double bloom varieties Knockout roses have been around for a while, and what I like about them is they, they really do bloom and rebloom. Now, with roses, if you ever have these rose diseases, the best thing to do with roses is literally to hack them and um, chop them all the way down to the base. They typically bounce back when you do that, but roses do need a lot of bright light, full sun actually. They do better in hot weather and don't um, top water them. That's my best advice for roses. And you can see they've got some more wax begonias right over here. Now with these wax begonias, I have to still replant my wax, wax begonias. I bought that several weeks ago because I intend to grow them in planters outside and eventually bring them inside. But here is one of the plants that I do want to try to grow indoors. I remember getting purple shield plants um, a couple years back and growing them indoors. They did okay. And you can see that this one is root bound. This one is for $8.98. These purple shield plants Look at the gorgeous looking um, purple it has. I love dark foliage plants. I love purple plants. And this is one that I knew I could find at a big box store. And purple shield plants, the thing about it is these don't need like full sun. They actually prefer like shaded, um, you know, I would say shaded situations is what I'm saying, um, rather than full sun. So this will possibly work indoors. What I do plan to do is just grow these out in my patio until it gets really hot. And then we're going to see about bringing them indoors. I think growing most plants outside, even indoor tropical plants, if you grow them outside, they typically thrive and do better than growing them indoors. There's just something about a plant being outdoors. I think it's just the natural habitat of a plant. So we're going to see, but I do love the purple shield plants. Um, look at these right here. They've got a nice shine about them. It is really a dark purple um, tone. And I'm thinking about getting a lot of purple plants today. This one's for $8.98. I do plan on repotting this if I do buy it. Um, plant foldies, anybody watching this um, video at the moment, please let me know in the comments if you would grow a um, purple shield plant or if you've grown them in the past. My thing about purple shield plants is 
they can get leggy so you're gonna have to trim them back um, to keep them bushy but we're gonna keep walking around here I mean this Lowe's is one of my favorite Lowe's to visit because they have really good indoor plant selection I already saw them um, watering the plants um, the indoor plants what they'll do is they'll take them outside water them real quick and then bring them back inside um, what else do we have here we've got some roses some more different types of roses this one has some more variegation look at that that is stunning i would love to be able to grow roses again um there's just a lot of plants so the thing about me is i don't really discriminate when it comes to plants i love outdoor plants indoor plants aquatic plants whatever plants you get um i'm even thinking about actually getting a bunch of cool looking um um aeoniums which is another type of succulent because i always mentioned that i don't know a lot about succulents but that's in the works um anyways we've got some more azaleas here these are the encore azaleas so encore azaleas can bloom three times a year usually azaleas will only bloom around this time which is spring but encore azaleas um have been uh, pretty much hybridized where they found certain azaleas that had like reblooming properties and bred them so these are really cool i do like this one this one is the um, encore azalea bonfire it's more of a dwarf type azalea so it can spread to about three feet in width and then three feet in height those would really do well in smaller space landscapes and japanese gardens and then we're just going to pass by a bunch of these other plants so you can see for some reason they've just got a lot of boston ferns available um, to purchase um, at any big box store and even grocery stores i'm not sure what the abundance of boston ferns are they kind of remind me of plants like um what is it bromeliads and phalaenopsis orchids where they're just readily available so i don't know if there's just a high demand but anyways we are gonna walk over here so i saw this plant um a little while back a couple days ago actually and i was like thinking i would possibly grow this this is a variegated boat lily or some type of trade scanthia just a larger mounding form and i love the variegation on this one particularly look at this i'm gonna definitely buy this this was for 8.98 um this has some beautiful pink and purple variegation and so i am gonna just keep um, collecting some purple plants or pink plants you know those are one of my favorite types of plants but this one i'm gonna take now with um, this particular plant it can get leggy if you don't um, give it enough bright and direct light it will not really do well or at least what i was told it won't do as well in just full sun so this is part shade and since you know if you look at any outdoor plants that are part shade that means it could potentially grow indoors so that's the thing i want to try is actually growing this indoors i will repot this in a better planter um, but alongside with the purple shield plant and then this um, variegated boat lily those are the two plants i want to purchase today at this lowe's 8.98 is not bad i love the look of it and we're just going to keep walking around the outdoor section i'm about to go inside to check out what they have indoors but you can see they've got a bunch of croton petras right here for 1998 in 10 inch um, planters crotons are a love and hate type plant some people love them some people hate them i think crotons get a bad um reputation just because they can be finicky plants i think with plants like that that just really require a lot of light they will definitely um be dramatic if they don't get the lighting conditions and the care conditions they literally will drop their leaves i remember importing a um, a rare type of croton from indonesia called a croton milk where it had just like elbow variegation it dropped all of its leaves and um, i did bring it outside about two weeks ago and it's in full sun and now it's starting to shoot out some some buds so that's the thing i really think that crotons do better outside and you can see we just passed by like a japanese aurelia or a fat and japonica this is another plant that i don't know the plant id um, i recently bought a fatsa japonica camouflage a variegated green on green J japanese aurelia that i intend to grow indoors right now it is um, out in my front patio and so we're going to see if i can grow that but that's the thing about um, pl growing plants it's just experimenting and seeing what they you know what they can grow and you can see some more boston ferns right here two for 24 dollars these are lush and full um boston fern hanging baskets now for the um folks that are watching this video let me know if you guys grow ferns especially specifically boston ferns what your care tips look like and do you enjoy them 
And this is another one. So these are some Ajuga Reptins. Um, so these are basically ground covers. These Ajuga um, variegated ones I do love. So this one is for $4.68. I am going to definitely pick up this plant as well because I want to try to grow this in a, a, a planter and possibly bring that inside and grow them indoors. Um, these are easy to propagate as well. They're crawlers, so they will actually become good ground cover. You can see this one has a little bit of a purple bloom right here. Um, I first saw a Juga out in Austin, Texas, actually at a local plant nursery called Tillery Street Corpor um, Co. And I thought these were really cool. They have many different varieties, but this variegated version is super cool. Now, if you have a, a Juga variegated form like this, this one will need a little bit more bright and direct light to really get that nice cream, pink, purple variegation. But yes, this is definitely another plant that I'm going to get. And these are all partial shade, partial... Um, you know partial sun and these are some large periwinkle plants um this one was one that i um thought about possibly um taking indoors but i held off from that and then guys hedra helix this hedera helix i just love saying hedra helix i know that is not the correct way to say it but hedera helix this one's for 468 um at least they are actually marketing these plants to be grown outdoors. So if you don't know a lot about English ivy, but basically English ivy are also supposed to be grown indoors or what, what they're marketed for, but they are so finicky when it comes to being spider mite prone. They are known as spider mite uh, magnets, and that's what makes them very challenging to grow indoors. Here we have um, some foxtail fern um i thought these were asparagus ferns but look at how cute the the texture of the fern looks like i really like that a lot and it's one of those ferns that you know i just really enjoy one that i would possibly add in the landscape so we'll see about that and then we've got some more um, boston ferns right here i always look at this uh, particular shrub because it's got some cool variegation it almost reminds me of a croton um, gold dust and then we've got some more alocasia um right over here these are for 1998 so big box stores actually have some really good plants and then right next to it is another quarter line plant this is an auntie lou quarter line for 1998 this one is saying that it's partial um shade but honestly i think if you grow quarter line in full sun they'll do very well and give you the best type of variegation and coloration like look right over here they've got some pink ones and you can't go to like a big box store or a grocery store or any store that sells plants without seeing a bunch of hydrangeas in um pots right here so these hydrangeas are gorgeous i love hydrangeas they're acid loving plants so if you're going to grow them in a landscape make sure you amend the soil make sure that the soil is more acidic you can do that by adding a bunch of used coffee gr um, grounds they do very well it's really good fertilizer actually and in here they've got some large um indoor tropical plants um, we've got some aglonemas right over here we've got some majesty palms and some large spathophyllums and on this side we've got some succulent some type of blooming succulent and then we have some more auntie lou cordyline plants i love me some cordylines after going to that home depot where they had that like intense crimson red variety i'm thinking about getting a large cordyline like this and just growing it out in the landscape and then potentially trying to overwinter it so we'll see best of luck to me right and then right over here we've got an aglonema white rain i love aglonema is one of my favorite plants um this one's for 29.98 that is not a bad price at all for aglonemas look at that variegation and even that subtle yellow glow around the, um, the the veins and then the classic aglonema silver bay i'm thinking about just getting one of these large aglonema silver bay mine is taking forever to grow and that's the thing of the only drawback about aglonemas is that they are a very slow growing plant but they've got so many varieties shapes sizes leaf textures even stem colors i love a wide stem aglonemas i think they are so gorgeous i mean it's one of those plants that just has so many varieties and they can tolerate lower light conditions they thrive better when you underwater them and i consider myself an underwaterer not because i don't want to water my plants it's just because sometimes i get um inundated with lots of work and i just have like a very busy day every single day and you can see right here we've got some more hydrangeas these ones are for 32.90 um 32.98 
not a bad looking um, hydrangeas. Now with hydrangeas, depending on the soil pH or how acidic the soil is, these um, hydrangeas can actually change in color. They can e either get more pink or more purple or more blue. So I think that that's really cool. Now I don't think that these would <laughs> be, be able to take full sun as advertised on that little nameplate. Hydrangeas prefer more bright and direct light. They prefer shade. They need to be protected from the late afternoon sun. I haven't had the best luck with hydrangeas. I've tried to grow them in my landscape in the past and for some reason they are just not able to do so at least in North Dallas that's where I'm based at but look at the coloration of these plants I love those pastel colors um, a lot of hydrangeas come out around Easter so maybe this is the time to purchase hydrangeas but we'll see now we've entered uh, what I'm sure most of you guys wanted to see, and that is the indoor uh, tropical plants. Now this particular Lowe's is amazing. They always have full selection of plants. Their plants are always merchandised well. They're always healthy looking. And I just really enjoy that whoever runs this particular Lowe's department for this um, indoor and outdoor section does an amazing job and their staff are super nice. I would always say that I get great service whenever I need some help, but let's just look at all of these plants for a second. As you can see, this um, Lowe's is super full. So my um, plant foldies watching this video, let me know what you think about this particular big box store um, out in Allen, Texas. You can see they've got these gorgeous aglonemas um, arranged by um, species. And you can see aglonema Maria right over here. This one is for $15.98 in a self-watering planter by Costa Farm. So I do like these self-watering planters. The only critique I would have for this particular planter is I wish it didn't have that texture. I honestly wish um, Costa Farms would just have gone with a more modern finish, which is like matte and smooth. I do like this um, aglonema. So if you are a Grow Folds follower and if you watch my videos, you know you're gonna see um, in Aglonema Red Siam. This is probably the second or maybe even first most common Aglonema you will find um, alongside with the Aglonema Silver Bay. But you can see that this has, um, not Pink Siam, this is the Red Siam. And you can see that um, it's got some really nice variegation to it. The stems are more of like a pink um, tone or red tone. And you can see here, actually one of my favorite plants i've really grown to like the raven zz zz plants weren't a thing for me and this is a costa farms trending tropical plant for 1998 it's another self-watering planter but with um zz plants i used to not really be into them because i'm like they were super slow in growing but they're very um good plants to have especially if you sometimes neglect your plants they actually thrive with neglect same thing with this aglonema pink siam now this is the pink version you could see that the stems are a little bit lighter they've got this like pastel light pink color about it and the thing about these particular aglonemas which are also known as lipstick aglonemas is you if you give it more bright and direct light the um, outlining of the pink will be more pronounced and you can see what a sea of like, you know, black raven ZZ plants. Really love that a lot. And then look at this um, bird's nest fern, how large it's already gotten in a six inch um, self-watering planter. But we're going to walk over here and I'm going to show you this particular aglonema. I, I bought this not too long ago as well. This is an aglonema two-tone moonstone. Really cool looking aglonema because it looks like a sparkling Sarah, but it is not. It's got a lighter variegation on the pink it's got um, white and it's just got a nice looking tone and even has like a subtle pink vein 
uh, on it. So there's just a lot going on with that. That is a trending tropicals plant for 1998 in a self-watering planter. So really nice job to Costa Farms for really just releasing some new um, trending tropicals. I recently found a rare Diefenbachia called a Diefenbachia Cool Beauty. If you haven't checked out my video, that is um, one that you might want to see. Super cool looking plant. And in here, we've got an Epipremnum arium golden pothos. Now, this pothos plant is one of the plants that I've said it in so many of my videos, but that usually brings people to houseplants. That is usually the houseplant that starts your houseplant journey. Very easy a plant to take care of, one that I would highly recommend. And then this is another Diefenbachia. I talk about Diefenbachias a lot. This one's actually on clearance. You can see that somebody's marked out the the um, the bar the scannable barcode. So this will be 50% off. Um, this one is typically if it's in a self watering planter for 15.98. So that'll be 50% off. If I didn't. Um, have any Diefenbachia, I might consider getting this one, but I just definitely, not Diefen, oh, I said it's Diefenbachia. That is a Dracaena. Sorry, guys. I don't know where I'm at today, but that is a Dracaena. But Dracaenas are easy to care for plants. Um, they can tolerate lower light conditions and be underwatered. They don't need as much water. But I wanted to show you guys over here what a cool looking Aglonema red cyan. This one has a lot of red and pink. So you can see that this, um, Aglonema is gorgeous. Um, the more light you give it, the better coloration you're going to get from these red, um, colorful aglonemas. The aglonemas that are more green can tolerate lower light, more lower light conditions. But to get the best kind of coloration and to get your aglonemas not to be leggy, you want to give it a lot of bright indirect light. So just more tips for anybody who um, wants to grow aglonema. And you can see we've got a Dracaena marginata here, large um, bird of paradise more hanging baskets in the corner in the back i'm going to take a look at those specifically and then you can see on this side we've got another Diefenbachia, and yes i said the right um name for this plant now Diefenbachia maculata highly variegated Diefenbachia. i mean look at that it reminds me of like an aglonema spring snow the only difference is with this particular Diefenbachia, you're going to need it a lot of like give it a lot of bright and direct light Diefenbachia will let you know if they're not happy with their lighting conditions by dropping their leaves they get very leggy very easily so just you know if you're gonna grow Diefenbachia and they are gorgeous plants although from what i've heard and what my viewers have said Diefenbachia can be a little bit more challenging to grow indoors I would say if you're able to grow them outdoors in like a shaded patio, I would do so. And let's see, we've got Calatheas. This one is a Calathea medallion for $15.98 in a self-watering planter. Um, I have found the sweet spot when it comes to Calathea care, and that's to grow them in hydroponics. So basically what I would do is take this plant, purchase it, and then I would hose down and clean down the roots as much as possible to where there was no um, dirt and then stick it in just water. And it just, it, it's basically self-caring at that point. And then right over here, we've got a ficus lyrata in a self-watering planter. This one is a little bit more compact. This fiddle fig leaf for $15.98. With ficus lyrata, they can get large. You definitely need to give them consistency, meaning once you take this plant home, find a spot that it's gonna stay, keep it there, and make sure that you have consistent routines around watering it, pest control, all that good stuff. And then right here, we've got Calathea Green Goddess. It's actually one of the Calatheas that I want to add to my collection. Not because it doesn't, you know, it, it, it has all of the, the different colors. I really like it because it's more green. It doesn't have that purple underside on the leaves. There's just more green around it. And that's the thing about plants. I know we, we've we talked about this before where we run for like variegated plants. I myself am included, but I do prefer some of the, sometimes just having really lush green colors in my plants. And they're a little bit more hardy when you think about a green plant. The variegation can't uh, photosynthesize, so it doesn't really like give the plant a lot of nutrients. But um, anyways, here is the Calathea Dotty. I do like this a lot. Um, I already have a Calathea Dotty. As you can see, it's got dark foliage, nice purple and lavender color. Look at that beautiful um, purple underside. I have mine growing in hydroponics. It is finally starting to sh push out new growth. So I'm really excited about that. You know, when you acclimate plants to a hydroponic situation, they do have a acclimation period where they may potentially decline in health. Some of their... Um, 
roots might um, rot off but don't um, you know have no fear what you need to do though is when you first get them in hydroponics is you need to change do frequent water changes in order for the um the water to just have a lot of oxygen for the roots but look at all of these plants here every time i go to this lowe's they always have full um, plants whether it's in the winter spring fall i'm sure that this lowe's is always um, taken care of and you can see here dracaena basangiana or the cane dracaena these ones you typically see at like corporate offices businesses doctor's offices but i do encourage everybody to potentially grow a dracaena um um, Masangiana. This one's only for $22.98 and you get a really large plant. These um, are typically grown because they can tolerate lower light conditions and neglect. And you can see right over here, we've got another palm for $22.98. Look at how large that palm is. And then we have Majesty Palms. You can never run out of Majesty Palms as well, although that one's not looking as healthy. It's got some yellowing going on. And now we're going to be looking at some urban jungle and live transplants like this one right over here is a ZZ plant. Look at that. I actually like the planter as well. It's got a modern take about it. I um, may not like the um, the particular color on the blue plant, but I am very particular on some of the planters I have. And you can see here they've got a lot of um, live trend hanging baskets look at these cute live trend planters these rabbits are so cool with a little bit of an air plant right here um it actually gives you that candy vibe and this one's for 7.98 so that's the thing i appreciate about live trends plants they have some amazing planters they definitely go for that modern vibe and you can see right over here we've got some haworthias the only thing i don't like about live trends is they 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 kind of go overboard with the top dressing like i don't think that they necessarily need to put um fake moss there honestly the fake moss um actually would attract like fungus gnats because say if you top water that um that moss will just keep a lot of moisture in and that's just not good for the plant and here we've got some air plants in these cute little rabbit um i don't know how you would call it just a rabbit fixture with a little clear bowl for those air plants and then this is a gorgeous looking calathea now plant foldies if you're a calathea um expert and i can't find the price for it please let me know what this particular calathea plant id is i actually would love to buy this calathea i'm just not going to spend 22.48 though for this calathea what makes live trend plants expensive or a little bit more costly is because of the planters honestly i would rather just choose the specific planter versus paying a little bit more but some people want that instant gratification as well speaking of instant gratification this is a nanthi plant look at this gorgeous looking green on green variegation like i often see these in smaller varieties but if i wanted instant gratification i would totally buy this for 22.48 that is a nice looking plant and i have a stromanthi trio star and it is doing amazing actually haven't had to give it a lot of um humidity but you can see that that is the price right here 22.48 in this um this teal or light blue planter and you can see this is happy because it's got some new um, leaves starting to unfurl so what a nice looking plant and then we've got some ferns this is a hurricane fern right over here i do like the look of the hurricane fern so i've bird's nest fern i might actually start with this one or just a regular bird's nest fern when i decide to get a fern we're gonna see about that though so there's just a lot of plants i talk about that in all of my videos of what plants i want to get but you know when you are doing daily plant shopping videos for at least an hour you're always going to run into plants that you want to get like for instance this one right here this is by live trends ficus um um elastica altissima gorgeous looking ficus elastica this one is an okay variegated one this one is has got some green on green variegation um you can get better variegation when you give ficus altissima a lot more bright and direct light it is a nice looking um ficus the only problem with ficus is again if you don't have that bright lighting condition you're not going to be able to grow them successfully indoors so just you know mind you on that whenever you're looking at plants like i'm always showing you guys plants i will always give you guys my honest opinions my care tip insights and if you're watching um, this video, please feel free to leave in the comment section your care tips or what you like, what plants you want to see. I'm always open for feedback. And if you're currently watching this in the live premiere chats, um, leave, leave in the comments what you think about some of the plants. Again, I am all about that engagement on YouTube. If you're not following me on Instagram, please follow me there as well. You can send me a direct message. I like to just engage with our plant community. So 
And you can see here, we've got bromeliads, bromeliads everywhere. We've got bromeliads just, you know, popping out of everywhere. These ones for, for 2024, it is the same kind of um, price that you would see at a local plant nursery. And they've got more bromeliads right over here. Bromeliads, it is such a diverse genus. Like this one right here is actually cool. This one doesn't really have those like dark, not dark blooms. This one is actually more darker foliage. 1398 is not bad. Um, and it doesn't really have those bright blooms that you typically see for bromeliads. I prefer the bromeliads that um, are like this, but have um, the pink variegation and striping i think those are really cool but you know there's a bromeliad for everybody i would always say you know some plants may fit better in somebody else's personal aesthetic like you can see here these particular bromeliads i often see with the um the flowers or the blooms i'm not as big of a fan for that personally but you know the, these are the most common ones you would see Speaking of common, you can see that we've got a bunch of Philanopsis orchids here. I will never get tired of looking at Philanopsis orchids and featuring them in my videos. So just know that in pretty much every plant shopping video, you're going to see a Philanopsis orchid. You'll also see some ponytail palms. We've got some yucca cane plants right over here. Um, just lots and lots of large um, foliage plants. Now with all of the plants we're looking at, um, this Lowe's particularly keeps up with the, the health of the plant even their um i would say even their clearance or what i would call rescue me plants um do well here if i am gonna buy any plants full price i would definitely buy it at this low just because i don't really see a lot of pests i have a lot of great positive reviews and again their staff is really kind and you can see here i featured this um, in a couple of videos now but it looks like live trends has this like cozy cottage planter series um, it doesn't really make sense to me, but you can see that this um, isn't a bad price. Now, I'm not a big fan of these um, ficus ginseng plants. I just think that the stump is just a little too much for me. And then we're going to pass by these smaller varieties of bonsai. These ones um, are the... Uh, I forgot what specifically this um, bonsai it is, but anyways, this one's for $18.38. I'm not a fan of Costa Farms bonsai um, planters. I think um, they they could have gone with more shallow planters but you know you can always buy a plant like this and then transfer it into a better bonsai um planter that's what i did with a rescue plant for like a chinese elm that i bought at um walmart and then right over here we've got a dracaena dorado nice looking dracaena again by um is that urban no yeah it's by urban jungle urban jungle just has so many cool little plants these ones are all for 13.98 this one is another dracaena I love Dracaenas as well. And the funny thing is about Dracaenas, actually, this is the bigger variety. So these are for $22.28, sorry. But, you know, the thing I like about Dracaenas is, again, they're easy to care for plants. I am surprised that I have not collected so many plants. And then this is another plant that I always ask for the plant ID. Please leave in the comments. You can leave in the, uh, leave a timestamp for this particular plant. I love the look of this plant because it's got that silver foliage on it. And then when you flip it, um, the undersides of the leaves have a gorgeous looking crimson, almost purple tone to it. I do like the, um, the texture of the leaves. I don't know a lot about the plant care tips, so I'm always wanting to learn from you guys. So if you are familiar with that particular plant, give me the plant ID and the plant, um, you know, care tips. I'd love that a lot. And then right over here, we've got an Epipremnum Arium Neon Pothos. I love me some Epipremnum Arium Neon. These are gorgeous looking plants as well. Um, I am all about these Neon Pothos. Pothos in general, again, are easy to care for plants. One of my goals is to propagate a di lots of different types of cuttings and then sticking them in a planter so I could have like a mixed pothos plant. That would be awesome. And a neon pothos is just a classic plant that can light up a darker space in your home. That one can tolerate lower light conditions. The more bright light you give it, the more yellow the color is going to look. And then this one right here is actually a unique looking um fern i'm not a hundred percent sure what type of bird's nest fern this is this has got a cute little planter as well kind of uh, matches that vein on this particular fern but what i like about this fern is um the texture of the leaves but more so that color it has like a metallic i don't know like green shine about it um it doesn't look to be in the best health but 
I find this particular fern interesting. It's got more of a, uh, a shim shimmer about it. I don't know what it is, but if you know the specific plant ID, plant foldies in the live premiere chat, or even if you're watching this now, please leave that in the comments. And then this is actually my first time ever seeing kokedamas, um, succulent kokedamas in these like um, coconut husk right here. This is interesting. I don't know what this specific type of succulent is, but you can see that they are going more so um, green, meaning that they're not using plastic. So I really like seeing that a lot. And you can see right over here, we got some wor Worthias in a Kokodama setting. So Kokodama is basically a, a Japanese art of g getting a moss ball and growing them and then hanging them. Those are a really cool way to display them. The way you would water this particular plant is you would just dunk the entire um, ball into water let it soak and then just let it drain and hang it back up again but you can see that that bird's nest fern is looking cute these all have um that's you know sphagnum moss here and if you want to see more go to kokodama.com i would love to see more of those so i'm going to definitely check out that website and you can see we've got some more urban jungle plants here not just costa farms plants but urban jungle plants i do like them i just wish they had more simple um you know planters like this right here this green marantha is really nice looking these are for $13.98 but I just wish that they had a solid like terracotta planter like this if they were going to go with that because not all um not everybody's like housing aesthetics or like a uh, plant styling aesthetics do well with texture plants I think they would actually sell more um especially if you're going for like a modern stylish look a lot of times people go for that modern contemporary look and that doesn't always work well for people but anyways, I'm going to get off that rant and look at this um, Peperomia obtusifolia Golden Gate. I ended up getting one of these actually for $6 at HEB, which is a grocery store out in Texas. And you can see this is another Croton Petra, but this one seems to have dropped its leaves. So it may not necessarily be happy being in a lower light condition again with Crotons. You need to give it a lot of light. They actually grow best outdoors in most tropical um, countries. That's where they are. Um, they're used in the landscape. And you can see we've got a lot of um, live trends hanging baskets um, with golden pothos. What else do we have over here? We've got a ficus elastica burgundy for $13.98. Again, this is another plant that I would highly recommend getting high light conditions. You can, um, I've even grown this in full direct sun in a Texas summer and it did not burn. So like you just have to really experiment with the lighting conditions. I will say the more light you give it, the more um, water it's gonna require. And then this is a nice looking Pachira Aquatica stump. I think this is really cool. I like this version versus the braided money tree types. Um, I just like that huge stump. And what I love is this is the kind of like, look, I like this minimalistic terracotta it's really nice and i even like the fact that it's a tall planter it gives it a little bit more height and depth for your um styling plant styling and you can see here we've got another um sansevieria or snake plant nice looking one sansevieria or snake plants are considered easy to care for plants they can um, tolerate lower light conditions although i have found that they can be a little bit more difficult to grow and we're just going to keep panning over here and looking at some plants This is super cool. So when you talk about growing plants hydroponically, here is a, an example of some Dracaenas growing in just straight water. And I do love that Live Trends has this really cool looking fixture um, where they have like a glass vial and then just that ceramics. Um, I like that a lot. Let's look at the price here. These ones are for $14.98. That is not a bad price at all. And I do like the aesthetic behind it. I would definitely buy the white um, version, the white planter, but this one is a really cool one. This one is a Dracaena white jewel. Look at that gorgeous variegation on it. And you can see that the roots are super healthy, but that is an example of growing things. Um, so we will, um, you know have more of those available and i just like the fact that um, they have different types of dracaena and you know live trends chose a really good plant although this one is starting to run out of water so they may need to get a little bit of water into this immediately but i like this new release um, hydroponics looks like it's going to be something that is uh, trending this year unless maybe i'm just late to the bandwagon but i do like growing plants in just straight water and then i will commend live trends for actually having a stylish look about 
about this, the way they present hydroponics. And look at that. I love how this like bright light hits this plant. These plants are living their best life. And look at the roots. You can tell that these roots are healthy because they're white and firm, not brown and soggy. So just make sure that you um, look at your plants. If you're growing them in hydroponics, make sure that you're constantly checking them for, you know, healthy, viable roots. Um, frequent water changes help. And then you can see right here, these are self-watering. So basically, Life Trends has this little like string wick. And then basically they have a planter here where you just put some water. The, um, the, the string pulls up the water and feeds the plant. These are some cute little baby um, ponytail palms. And then we've got some more terrarium looking things right here with um, air plants. This is actually a nice looking um, watering can, but I'm not going to pay $25 for a gold watering can. I have a watering can that's similar. It's um, actually a longer spout watering um, can. And you can see right over here, they've got some more like spring Easter um, type theme planters. These ones are Hawarthias. Um, so Live Trends has some really cool ideas for planters. Um, I, um, I understand why, and this one's actually for $9.98. I understand why they want to, um, you know, dress up these plants because they want a stylish look. Um, like you can even see right over here these are the um, cozy cottage planters look at this cool looking um philodendron heteraceum brazil this one's got an interesting looking leaf i'm going to just kind of zoom in right over here look at that that's actually a really cool looking leaf love that variegation philodendron heteraceum brazil is a common philodendron um trailing or hanging basket type plant and you can see right here i'm not going to pull these out but this is an epipremnum aria marble queen pothos and then we have a neon queen pothos right here alongside a skin dapsis um, pothos right over here nice looking one um, all of these are really cool hanging baskets i don't really know how i feel about that rattan um, band around it but you know that's live trends and you know live trends they can do that They've got some stylish planters, although this is probably my favorite release of theirs. And then now we're going to pan over here and I'm going to show you some really cool looking um, flowering anthuriums. These are for $13.98. I have three flowering anthurium growing in hydroponics and they are doing amazing. Um, these like i've said in previous videos they do very well because their roots are really thick so i think the transition to just straight water um, wouldn't be as big of a shock as compared to plants with, with really fine roots and then over here we've got a um, strawberry begonia hanging basket for $16.98 i think this plant is adorable i do like the veining on the leaves the undersides of the leaves well what makes this plant really cool is when it starts to mature it'll shoot out strings of little baby strawberry begonias that you can actually propagate very easily I, I might even just get the green variety, this um, one, um, this version as well. I have a variegated one with a bunch of pink variegation and it is lovely, but we're just gonna pan over here and look at all these Costa Farm plants. This um, Lowe's is super um, packed with plants. Now that I have like a dedicated plant room in my home, I'm gonna start collecting a little bit more of these smaller um, Costa Farns exotic angel plants. Like these are so cool. I love this um, Palia Pan Am. This one is for $7.98 um, in a five inch planter, but look at that. Um, I really like the look of it. You know, Palia plants, they've got the metallic shine about it. And this one is a really cool black rabbit's foot fern. This is probably another fern that I would add. Um, this one is for $5.98. That's not a bad price at all. And we've got some more purple waffle plant. I love purple plants. I already have this one and it's actually doing very well for me. It's doing a lot better than the snow white waffle plant and the Belgian waffle plant. Both of those previous waffle plants that I mentioned are a little bit crispy. So we're going to see. And then this is an Amy Diefenbachia. So this is another Diefenbachia I don't really see often. You usually see the Camille Diefenbachia, but this one is for $5.98 in an exotic angels Costa Farms um, release. Really like that a lot. 
lot. And you know, if you're looking for exotic angels or exotic plants, Costa Farms does a great, great job. I'm offering a lot of varieties of plants and I do appreciate them. Like this one is a plant that I really need to pick up. I probably should have picked up this one. This is another Palea Dark Mystery. Look at the shine on the leaves. Look at the metallic shine. And this one is a nice lush and full one. I wish they had the 598 version instead of the 798. I would rather have gotten the three and a half inch planter versus the five inch one. This one's a little bit large, but if I can't run into one of those, I might just end up getting one of these as well. So that way my Palea collection grows. I've got a aluminum Palea a plant. I've got that Pan Am Palea plant. And then I've got the aluminum variegated version as well. And here we've got a gorgeous looking regular lipstick plant. Look at the shine, the natural shine on the leaves. And this one is for $16.98. Um, do you guys grow lipstick plants, plant folies? Leave it in the comments. I'm curious to see if you are a fan of um, lipstick plants or do you prefer Hoyas? They kind of give me this um, a similar look about them just because their leaves are kind of waxy looking and then you can see they've got just tons and tons of um exotic angel plants and here is another hedra helix this hedera helix or um english ivy this one is the asterisk um english ivy this is one actually that has um been enticing me when i say enticing me to purchase it i am very um careful about purchasing um english ivies just because i've killed about 12 of them um and now i am on lucky number 13 and 14 and they're doing well for me but here's another hedra helix this hedera helix spear point ivy is a nice looking one or no i think uh, yeah spear point ivy is a nice looking one i really like how like narrow the leaves are how pointy the leaves are so that's the thing about english ivy there's just so many varieties that you would think that if they were an easy to care for plant i'm sure people would collect them because look at this one here's another hedra helix this um Bettina um, Hedera Helix English Ivy has some really nice um, foliage. I like that it has more rounder foliage. It curls down a little bit. It's a little bit larger leaf and the variegation is gorgeous. I do own this particular um, um, Hedera Helix. I have this Hedera Helix as well as the Hedera Helix Gold Baby and surprisingly they're doing well for me. I think it's because I spray them with my DIY um, neem oil once a week and make sure that they have they're right next to a humidifier to keep away spider mites but i have also found that this coffee plant by costa farms is one plant that i might get coffee plants i might try to look for a variegated version but this one is for 5.98 i kind of want to grow just a basic coffee plant because i do like how the leaves are shiny and it's just a green variety i think that would be cool to add to my collection and again um you know i can collect a bunch of these smaller plants because i have my own plant room now this is a croton bush on fire i do like this specific croton because what i've noticed is the lower leaves tend to be a little bit um, more red and then the me medium um, area of the the plant have are a little bit more orange and then like the top part is yellow so i like that like um gradation of color so i really like that a lot and you know that's a croton i might eventually get um, in the season i am confident in growing crotons outside not so much indoors so we're gonna see and that's the thing if we add all of these house plants to our homes what do we do when we live in colder climates when and you know it snows in the winter or you get freezes there's only so much space you have in your home so i have to be mindful about that um, I do love pink plants and I always find um, Fetonia plants. You know, all of these plants that I mentioned, I know we often see these in my um, everyday videos. So I am shocked that you guys continue to watch my videos daily, but I appreciate it. Um, I did want to take the time to thank all of the plant foldies that continue to go on my live premiere chats. If you are new to this channel and you're just watching this for the first time live, don't be shy to say hello to um, the plant foldy community. We welcome everybody. And and I just really want to see us grow. I hopefully someday we'll see like a um, hundred people watching my videos live. We've had about as many as 85 people watching at one time. And I really thought that was amazing. But you know, the one thing you can do to help me out is if you haven't already, please hit that like button or what my number one um, cheerleader says, Luke um, on the live premiere, smash that like button. It doesn't take a lot of effort, but it does um, 
impact me a lot. It gives me a lot of support. It pushes my, my plant videos out to even more plant lovers like you. So I hope you can hit the like button for me. It makes my efforts to produce these videos, which on average take about four hours to produce um, daily um, worthwhile. And that one plant I just picked up is a Dracaena Janet Craig Compacta. You already know that if you're going to watch one of my videos, you will see a Dracaena Janet Compacta as well as a Philodendron Heteraceum Brazil. This one is for $20.98. This is the larger hanging basket. I prefer the smaller hanging baskets for $16.98 by Costa Farms. You don't have to like commit to such a large plant, but you can see they've got even more plants right over here. And we've got some more clearance plants and other plants over here. Just the overflow of plants. Um, they have to actually bring out these racks, but I love this about this um, particular Lowe's. And right here, we're looking at one of my favorite plants, which is also endemic to my um, country, the Philippines. That is a Epipremnum arium, no, no, Epipremnum pinnatum, sorry, pinnatum cebu blue gorgeous looking plant and then we've got an epipremnum arium enjoy this is not a pearls and jade these are often labeled as pearls and jade but this is an enjoy because um it has more contrast like very stark contrast these are not bad for 14.98 and hanging um, planters by urban jungle these are urban jungle plants for 22.98 so this one is a really cool looking dwarf variety this is a chiflera moon drop really like that subtle variegation that albo white variegation for this one mine is doing very very well i have it in some bright indirect light just to get it some more growth and you can see they've got more plants right over here i'm gonna walk over here and these are all of the other cost of farms exotic angel plants that um were just they just had so many they had to get another um rack but we've got this polia that i want to get this is a polia bolus or a friendship valley plant look at the texture of the leaves such an interesting one this one's for 7.98 um i have a friend his name is isaac he actually runs a youtube channel called hi jr sings he actually grows this plant and he is such an underwaterer so i'm surprised that his plant has done very well but he grows it and now i want to grow it as well it's gonna um you know add to my polia collection that's the thing when you get a certain plant you pick up one plant like a hydra helix this hedera helix is a ingrid um english ivy um, Ingrid Liz English Ivy for $5.98. Like you pick up a plant, like you want to start collecting English Ivies and all of a sudden you're picking up every single English Ivy. That's me with Palia plants. And then here is a Dracaena Sandriana. I'm actually going to get one of these plants soon because this one has more of a bamboo look about it. I do like the neon foliage. And what's interesting is this plant doesn't need a lot of water and it can tolerate lower light conditions and still maintain that gorgeous um, coloration on it. So there's just a lot going on when it comes to these plants. I do like all of these hanging baskets. Like look at this. Um, um, Syngonia, well actually this Peperomia Serpent. Let's look at this first. Peperomia Serpents is a really nice looking one. This one's for $16.98 hanging basket. This is another plant I might potentially grow. Um, I do like just look at how the, sh of the shapes of the leaves look like miniature hearts. Would love to see if they ever have like a variegated um, Peperomia Serpents. That would be awesome to see. And then this is just a classic Syngonium White Butterfly for um, $16.98 in a hanging basket as well. Love Syngoniums. The thing about Syngoniums is they can tolerate lower light conditions. They will get leggy, but the best um, place to give a Syngonium is you want to give it a lot of bright indirect light. Very easy to propagate. And now we're going to be looking at a bunch of Epipremnum Arium or Pothos. Like this one, I believe believe is an epipremnum arium snow queen unless it is stated as a manjula or a, not a manjula um a marble queen pothos this one's for 15 and 1698 in a smaller hanging basket planter really like that a lot look at those white stems as well it's a slower growing pothos though and then we've got an epipremnum arium neon pothos look at that so there's a lot of varieties of pothos so if you're just discovering my channel and you're wanting to get into house plants please get yourself like a neon pothos like this 
or um, even a golden pothos. They will grow for you vigorously. They're easier to take care of and you can propagate them. So there's a lot of, there's like a three in one, you know, special when it comes to that type of plant. You'll get a lot of um, happiness from it. You'll see it grow faster, but this one is probably the one pothos I would recommend. And that is the golden pothos. That is the pothos that starts everybody's journey. But you can see hanging all three of them. They got the golden pothos, neon pothos, and snow queen pothos right over here. All of them are gorgeous. I would love to propagate many cuttings of each one and stick them all in one pot and have like a combination plant. We'll see, but we're gonna just keep looking at more plants here. This is just a really full um, Lowe's. And that's what I enjoy doing is just going to these plant shopping videos. I'm going to go feature some more of these gorgeous Philanopsis orchids. This is the first time of me seeing this type of face on a Philanopsis orchid. Look at that um, texture of the leaf, just the coloration. But anyways, I'm going to go ahead and end this video and let you know that I ended up getting those purple outdoor plants. We're going to see if I can grow them. As always, if you haven't already, please make sure you hit the like button and to subscribe to my channel. Thank you again for tuning in. And I will definitely have some more videos out this week. I'll catch you on the next one. Bye.